I, uh, my partner and I own a house and um, uh, we live in a multi-generational multi-genera house. So we live, my mom lives with us. Uh, we were able to buy a house together, my mom and I. So my mom lives with us. We have one of our daughters with us. So we're in a really uh, very fortunate situation, but sometimes it feels like the age group that you and I are in, we might be the last age group that that's within striking distance. Yeah. I think nobody knows the answer, uh, but there's a lot of reasons why the opportunity of home ownership is out of reach for, for a lot of people. And it's sad to see the, um, the growing gap between the, uh, the, the haves and the have nots. And I worry sometimes that there's uh, a country like Canada that had such a strong middle class as I was growing up that feels like it's starting to erode, not just on a, obviously on an economic level, but just in terms of the quality of life where the balance between work and life is just so out of whack for, for the vast majority of people, whether they choose to be industrious go-getters or they just wanna get by. Like it's just the cost of living has, uh, has, has, has really feels out of control. Um. It, it, challenging question, so take whatever direction you want. How much is the industry responsible for creating a pathway to home ownership for, for generations to come? I don't know. That's a, that's a question that uh, requires some pondering. I, uh, I don't know. I, um, I don't know how much control the industry has. Like I think that that's sort of that's maybe part of the challenge is that everything is so compartmentalized like the obviously and depends on who you classify as part of the real estate industry like the mortgage financing industry is that part of it is the, are banks part of the the real estate industry but i think that uh, i think the the deeper you go you find flaws all over the place um and uh and I don't rightly know what the what the answer is, but I mean, one of the great fortunes I have in my life, like especially through the through the band, is that I get to travel and see other places. And I, and I mean, the 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 place that I love to bring up uh, in the Western world is uh, is Denmark, Copenhagen. I uh, my my wife is is from Norway, um, and she's lived in Canada for uh, for for more than fifteen years with me, but um, she'd never been to even though she grew up in Norway, she'd never been to, to Copenhagen. I remember the first time I went there on tour was uh, the early 2000s. And we were just there for one one day, and we played a show uh, at this youth center, like totally run down, with disgusting toilets I've ever smelt in my life. But the next morning, I got up early, and our drummer and I went, uh, went for a walk. We sat at a cafe, just eating Danish pastries and drinking coffee, and I was just looking at the piece. It was a sunny, beautiful summer day, and everybody was riding by us on bicycles and everybody was smiling. And I was just like, Eric, do you notice how happy everybody seems to be here? Like in a way that I'd never experienced anywhere else. And then over the years, I'd gotten to go back mostly to play shows. And it's just like, I always had that same experience. It's just like, there's just this like sense of contentment here and, and, and just like the general smiles on people's faces. And as I became a parent and just like saw how people like the, the care that their children had over there. And I like my circle of friends in that part of the world grew and I grew as an adult and started to understand things uh, a little more, more deeply. I, uh, I just came to realize like there is a, a uh, like a, a system of socialism over there that, there is a basic quality of life. There is uh, a, a protection. There, there's a, there really seems to be at all levels of government and industry a priority for people and making sure that there is a basic quality of life that everybody enjoys. And I'm not suggesting that nobody falls through the cracks. Of course they do. Nothing's perfect. It's still a country of millions of people. And I'm sure there's, there's hor horrific stories there as well. But Coming from a place like Toronto, where you just, I feel more and more, you see so many segments of our society where people just seem overlooked, ignored, or they're placated with, with easy answers from, 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 from government or wherever. And I just, 
and I, I, I'm not suggesting that this is that 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 uh, we're heading to a Mad Max world or anything, but I just I think that there is a, a huge disparity in uh, in in how our societies are organized, and I think that maybe in and I can say this for North America at large that maybe we have kind of lost our direction a little bit, and I think that real estate is a reflection of that. That there is the, like the inability, like. It's like, and being a homeowner is not the be all and end all of, 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 of anybody's life. It's not like it's like you can go the rest of your life and never own a, own a house or an apartment and you'd be just fine. But it's got to be housing itself is critically important. Having a sense of security that you're not one month away from living on the street, that is critically important. The, the insecurity and stress and agony that that brings to people and to families is devastating. And I think that that is the problem that that needs to be needs to be solved. And so, whether housing is is provided or or is owned is 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 less critical in my mind is that sense of of security. Yeah, I, I want to dig on it, in on this because you hit on a bunch of stuff that I think is super important. So, like when I said when I said the industry, you're like, well, what's the industry? Beautiful, right? So it's like, is it, is it uh, uh, the people who provide the mortgages? Is it the banks? Is it the realtors? Like, who is it? And like, let's go down to if I buy a house and then I sell that house, I want to make more money than I just right. made on that house. I think that's a very reasonable thing for anyone who wants to do because they'd view it as an investment, setting them up for the next thing or to leave to their children. So by nature, real estate, owning a, owning a place where you can take your money, invest into it wisely and set up a future, I think is a very wonderful, amazing thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And also not owning a home, I think traditionally it's been totally fine to be a renter. Of course now rent is becoming mm -hmm. impossible. So can someone not own a home for the rest of their lives and be fine? Yes, given the idea that rent stays stable enough and, and keeps up with, uh, with all the other things. Something though that, that you were hitting on that I think is like, this is it, man, it's like, I don't think it's up to the real estate industry to solve this thing. Because like, how does that happen? Because a homeowner is gonna wanna make more money on their home than last time. But maybe it's up to all of the adjacent industries and maybe it's up to all of the industries to assure quality of life. So we're going back to Copenhagen, like that quality of life and the assur assuring quality of life. This doesn't sound like a government thing because I think a government is incapable of doing that. I think it's gotta be a government industry thing of people saying, the, the demand of industry and the financial implications on the, on the individual have outstripped the ability of our system to provide security or any of these things. So what I'm talking about is like far more, I guess like I'm trending into like utopian uh, space, but like the idea that real estate kind of has this like nasty, can sometimes people can talk about it in a nasty way where I think it's like a wonderful, wonderful thing like to, to for a home ownership or to get into a good rental situation that's rent controlled or any of these things, it's great. It's just that the system, the way it's set up right now is fucking people and isn't gonna stop fucking people. And that's where I think industry could come in and, and do some stuff. So like with the advent of remote uh, work, here's one of the great things from COVID is it caused all these industries to realize, oh, people don't really need to come into the office. Great, I think from an industry point of view, it's like we could create situations where a job that you post in Vancouver could be like, oh, this is like a global job. We don't care where you are. It could allow people to live in, in places that are far more, have a much more uh, better quality of life. Your dollar will go further in terms of real estate. I think if we start looking at things from less of like local economies to more of like national economies and where can people live, but we still pay them as if they're working in Vancouver or working in Toronto, but you could live anywhere in, in Canada or basically in the world. I think that's a way where we can start playing with that quality of life. Uh, in a in a modern space, I think that real estate and that industry. I don't think people are like bagging on real estate agents, but like kind of the real estate industry. It's like well, we've all been frozen out. But I don't think that's because of the industry. I think it's because of the standard of life that we've uh, we've created this nightmare scenario in North America. I'll stop there. Just your whatever your thoughts are. Yeah, I I, uh, I I don't disagree with you. I just think that like there's. I think that there, there's challenges with, obviously we live in a, in a globalized world where uh, I think that we're coming to a place where eventually 
the, the places that are relatively depressed are going to catch on that, uh, that hey, this is, this is the value of, of labor elsewhere. This is the value of real estate elsewhere. Why is it lower here? And, I, and, and you see it in a lot of places, especially uh, post-COVID, where people who have a Vancouver or Toronto income move to a place where the cost of living is significantly lower and end up driving up the cost of living or the expat community starts to drive up the, the cost of living so that it no longer becomes affordable for the people who lived there originally, and that creates its own whole host of problems. So I hate to, to sound ignorant. I don't honestly know what the, what the answer is. Like the, uh, the Star Trek utopia is what I'd love to, uh, to, uh, to leapfrog to, but I, uh, I don't know that things won't get worse before we get there. So.